Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Sunday School again this morning. We appreciate uh, your attendance because, as I said before, without having a class that uh, we can teach to, it's kind of difficult to have a Sunday School. So thank you very much for your consistency and for plugging in every Sunday. Thank you for also reading your, your lesson prior to the day to get prepared and so we can all kind of be on the same page and some things will be confirmed that you've already studied during the week. The lesson today is the faith of Abraham, and this is lesson seven in the series of faith and salvation, and we're coming from Romans chapter four and verses one through 12. Now, the lesson aims, there are three aims, as you see in your Sunday school book, summarize the nature of Abraham's righteousness, distinguish between imparted righteousness and imputed righteousness. And the third thing is to make a, make a list of ways that imparted or credited righteousness will direct his or her thoughts and actions in the weeks ahead, the week ahead. Then the lesson also has uh, three outlines. Number one is the ancestor of Israel. That's Romans 4, 1 through 3, receiving righteousness, 4 through 8, and the father of the faithful, verses 9 through 12. So let's read, let's jump right in and read the first three verses of our lesson today, the ancestor of Israel. Verse 1, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? This is a question that Paul posed in the beginning of the lesson. For if Abraham were justified by faith, had he whereof to glory, but not before God. For what said the scriptures? Let me tell you what it said. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now let's get right into uh, this first little commentary on, verse, on the first verse. Abraham, number one, had a close relationship with God. And you're going to see this word trusted a whole lot. He trusted God, even when he was called to go to a place that he didn't have, have no idea where he was going, never seen, never been to the place, he went. He also trusted God to provide him a son, him and Sarah, when he was way, both of them, was way past childbearing years. He trusted God. You read, up, read about that in, in Genesis chapter 18 to give him and Sarah a child. It was kind of funny to Sarah. Abraham's high in the world because, you know, you know, we don't, you know. So Abraham, even not only that, he trusted God uh, when he was commanded to kill him. To sacrifice his, his only son after waiting all these years to go up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. Now, many, there's a whole lot of questions, a lot of why that people ask in that text. Well, you, you'll never understand it probably until by and by, but, but believe, you can believe the word, not believe me, believe the word. That was a, that, and that was a reason why. That was a solid reason why. And God provided a ram. You read about that, a ram in the thicket 
and he told him to stay your hand and don't kill him. But now he knows that Abraham believed and he trusted God. That's in chapter 22 of Genesis. So for these things that I just outlined and for a whole lot of other things that Abraham did, he, he is considered the father of faith. Why? Because he modeled faithful relationship with God. Not just relationship, he modeled a faithful relationship with God. And Paul focused his Jewish audience uh, on these facts and identifying Abraham as their father pertaining to the flesh. And so Paul uh, reasoning, his line of reasoning here uh, was a time way before Israel even became a nation. So Paul was strategic in his teaching and getting them to see that uh, the whole idea is faith, not works. And uh, you're going to hear me say that, and you're going to hear Paul repeat that in a repetitious way during this lesson, because it's important to understand that. To be justified is to be counted righteous. So the question is, did Abraham earn justification from all those things I just named? You know, waiting on the child, finally getting a child, the infant to kill the child, the going to a place he didn't know where he was going because he was commanded by God to go. Was this enough to justify him? No, no. No amount of, of good deeds, no amount of righteousness can, can position a person correctly before God. We can't buy our way and act our way into heaven. We got to believe our way. So Paul's original audience knew, they knew that Abraham did not always do the right thing. He wasn't always a righteous guy. Abraham told lies. Y'all know, anybody ever told any lies before? Now, if you say you ain't ever told a lie, uh, well, today you just made, uh, you just broke the record because you just told one. If you say you've never. So anyway, if he had been justified by his good works, then he'll have enough, he'll have some reason to glory before God of himself. But that was not the case because Abraham was not always a good little Sunday school guy, so to speak. He did things that he should not have done. And the folks that were around that time knew he did. In Abraham's marriage, think about that. Abraham tried to help God out. Now, Sarah consented to it initially. Then she got upset when that child got here. And all this, he told Abraham, she told Abraham, put, that, put him out. Put her out and put the boy out. And God told Abraham, listen to your wife. Okay, because he, he ended up putting them out. So he had a, a child with the handmaid, Hagar, or Hagar. You read about that in Genesis 16. So even, even so, Abraham chose later on to believe and trust that God had a plan. Not only did God have a plan, God was able to keep his promise. So Abraham, Abraham lived accordingly, and Abraham lived expectantly, which is what all of us should do is expect God to do what God said he's going to do. So this act of faith then gave him the status of a righteous person before a holy and righteous God. The word counted described the act of moving credits, moving credits into an accounting ledger. And the, the, an account with a negative balance, look, look at this. I like how the commentary explains this. An account with a negative balance, which is like an unrighteous person, now showed a positive balance because there was a righteous person, because there was a whole lot more negative debits in all of our lives than positive credits. And so we didn't have enough to overcome all the, the debits in our lives. So we thank God for this spiritual accounting system that moved uh, credits into, the, into our spiritual accounting ledger. So the result then for, for generations to come was that Abraham stood as the father of Israel first, but also to all believers who, here's that word again, trust God. So now let's go into the, the second part of our lesson, receiving righteousness in verses four, four through six. Now to him that work it is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that work it not, but believe it on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now look, he's going to go back, he's going to go years ahead now, years into the future. 
even as David, that didn't come for years later, also describe it the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed, imputed righteousness without works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So because of, again, the large number of our sin debits, we can never be justified by what we do. As in Romans 3 and 20 says, no one can be declared righteous through the works of the law. You see, we have our debits. Look, look at this, look from this standpoint. We had, we got so many bank drafts coming out. So many drafts coming out of our account to take care of this and take care of that. If we don't have enough cash in the account, we're going to get a whole lot of over, overdrafts, a lot of insufficient fund statements because not enough in that account to handle all of the drafts, the debits coming out. So we had to have some credits put in, let's call it some cash put in to be, to be able and in a position with the bank to cover all of the things that went out. If we don't have enough spiritual credits going in, we sure don't have enough to cover all these debits of sin that's, that's in our lives that's coming out. And we'll have a whole lot of insufficient fund fees in heaven. We should all thank God then uh, for the credits that's moved over, that, we, we, that, that righteousness was imputed to us. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty huge. Why is that so huge? Because Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. So if we, if we earned in what we deserve based on our works, we would all remain what? Dead in our sins. And anybody that thinks they, they're going to get down to the judgment seat, the judgment day, and they're going to come to God and, and build a case with a lot of things, a whole list of things that they you know, Lord, I, I fed the hungry, you know, I visited the sick and shut in, you know, Lord, I cut the mother's grass every Friday evening, you know, Lord, I, I laid my hand and I prayed for people. I went to the hospital all the time. I, I gave food to Ethiopia and I gave food to the homeless and uh, I even took care of the homeless animals. I brought some of them in and placed them in certain homes, the little kittens and the little dogs. I, I've been a real good guy. I've done so. I've done this, 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 and this. I got 15 things I'm going to line up right now that I've done. Let me own in, Lord, because I've, I've been a good boy. They're going to be so disappointed because they can't bring a list of things that they've done. Nobody can and say, this is enough to get me in. It ain't based on works, class. It's based on faith. It ain't based on works. It's based on faith. Now, to go from Abraham to David is, 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 a, is a historical shift in Paul's strategy here. This is like a whole millennium, like a thousand years later. So why are you bringing up David? Because David's sins, what David did is remembered until this day. David committed adultery and murder. He took a man's wife, got the woman pregnant, then had the man killed. That was a rub. I mean, and then look at this. And, and David's, the result of what he did, the consequences stayed in his life. Those side effects never went away in David's personal life. The child died. Later on, one of David's uh, younger, younger kids, younger boys, killed the first, the oldest boy, because the oldest boy raped his sister, Tamar. And, he, and, and the, the, the brother killed him. That sword never did leave David's life as a result of what he had done. But David eventually came to understand and came to know the blessings of forgiven sin. You read about that in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And, and he, he knew that the blessedness, blessedness of forgiven sin is the essence, the core of justification. So David understood then that the grace of God had enough power and was powerful enough to cover the to cover. The, the guilt of sin, the grace of God. And all of us in this class, all of us that's watching this lesson, we all need the grace of God. So David's repentance and David's faithfulness 
uh, while suffering as a result of his sin, because he suffered because of what he did, is a great part of why David is called a man after God's own heart. You read about that in 1 Samuel 13, also in Acts 13, 13, 22 in Acts, 13, 14 in 1 Samuel. So then the quote we see in verses 7 and 8 is from David, but that David quoted in Psalms 32, verses 1 and 2. And, and this is a great uh, lesson, a great passage on confession of sin. Confession of sin, repentance, and received righteousness, received forgiveness. So, so, so in, this, in this text here in Psalm 32, David encourages others to realize the happiness and that happiness is found in God's forgiveness. So if there's a lot of misunderstood, misunderstanding, a lot of sickness, spiritual sickness, that healing, that spiritual healing, and that happiness, that spiritual happiness can be found in the fact of God's forgiveness. You see, confession equals possession. And if it, you got some folks that are so stout-hearted that uh, they don't want to, they don't want to confess what they've done. But confession equals possession, and confession can release the disease that can waste the bones and destroy the bones and eat away at the soul, the mind, the gut of the guilty. And it opens a person up. It opens them up to God's forgiveness. But they got to be they got to be willing enough and should be willing enough to to allow God to break up that old stony heart. And the, the power of God, the word of God has the power to, to turn a rock into powder. He can break up that stony heart, but we got to be open. God's not going to force his way in. God's not going to make you receive his righteousness. That's inputted. We got to receive it by faith. We got to receive it by faith. So, so John wrote about this as well. What did John say? If we confess our sins, what, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, John? God is faithful and just to forgive our sin, forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's in 1 John 1 and 9. We read that all of our, all of our Christian life on this Christian journey. But we tend to read that and just go right on over it, you know. But we can't, we can't cut that out of the Bible. That's the truth. That's the word of God. And we got to accept and believe the word of God. Now, let's go to the, the next part of our lesson here. Uh, Father of the faithful. Look at what it says. Come at this, blessedness, this blessed, blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? That's the question. Well, here's the answer. When he was in circumcision, now the, the, this is the second part, the part two of the question. How was it then reckoned? Part one. When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Here's the answer. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Look at verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Them count, that includes us. Though they, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be inputted unto them also. Verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So we see then that Abraham... <clears throat> Abraham and every male in his household was circumcised at that time because he did that in obedience to God's requirement. In Genesis chapter 17, Abraham obeyed God because God told him to do it. Abraham obeyed God just as he did and had done for in, in many other times and many other 
uh, occasions before he believed God. But, but circumcision did not make Abraham or the men in his household more righteous because they had been snip, uh, not snip, they had been circumcised. That didn't make him any more righteous. Abraham was, was, was reckoned, was already reckoned as righteous because of his faith in God. Abraham took God at his word. And boy, can't, can't all of us learn a whole lot more from that if we take God at his word? See, we, we got to focus on understanding that faith is stronger than works. And you'll beat yourself in the ground. You, you, you'll, con, you'll confound your mind. You'll be confused beyond measure if, if any of us think that our works is going to get us in. No, it's our faith that's going to get us in. And our faith is going to encourage and our faith is going to influence what we do. So as I want to make sure I say that so nobody don't think, well, I can just, since I got the grace of God on my life, I can do what I want to do. I can go where I want to go. I can act how I want to act. Now, 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 come on now. That's just, that's just common sense. Can we continue in sin that, that grace may abound? God forbid. We ain't got time digging this thing that we completely because we ain't got for 30 minutes. So Abraham's faith then was reckoned to him as righteousness before he was circumcised. Before it was, it was, it was before that circumcision rule was implemented. He was already reckoned as righteousness, and this fact was so important in affirming that circumcision was not necessary for the faith of the Gentiles to be to be a valid follower of Christ. So the Jews couldn't say to the non-Jews, "If y'all ain't circumcised, y'all ain't in, y'all ain't in the family." Okay, that wasn't necessary. And Paul had to, had to make this fact real clear and real plain. Romans 2 and 29 says this, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So only faith in God's grace can result in being reckoned as righteous. And following his commands is a sign of our faith. Let me say that again. Following his commands is a sign of our faith. Without that faith, the signs are meaningless. Let's, let's kind of bring it closer to home. If a man or a woman say they love their wife, uh, the, the man loves his wife, the woman loves her husband, well, they're going to they gonna cut away all the little honeys. They ain't, ain't got, they ain't got no more love for the honeys. All their love, all their attention is for, is for his wife and for her husband because they've, they, they've committed themselves and they, 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 they've made a choice. And because of that choice, their actions are going to follow the choice. Their choice and their actions are going to be faithful. They're going to cover their wife. They're going to provide for that wife. She's going to make sure that he feels like a man and that she encourages him and, 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 and talks about her appreciation of him and, her, and him for her. Because they said, I do, they committed. They, 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 she, he put a ring on it, so to speak. Y'all, y'all see? So, so, and, and because of that, uh, the things that he do is going to follow the action that he's taken. Well, when a child of God accepts this righteousness through faith, the, that acceptance of that righteousness through faith is going to influence them in the lifestyle that they lead. They're just going to do the right thing because they, it's the natural result of this commitment of accepting righteousness and, accept, and believing in the death, burial, and resurrection, and believing that he died for, to cover our sins. And as a result of that, the righteousness of God was then put it accredited to us, to our account. That's a big deal. You see, Muslims who claim right now the lineage of Abraham via Ishmael, that child that Abraham had with Hagar, still practice circumcision as a religious requirement. But in contrast to the Abrahamic faith of Islam and Judaism, circumcision, circumcision was and is not imposed as a sign of inclusion in the Christian faith. And because Abraham was counted as righteous before God, uh, before, way before circumcision, Paul argued his case here. 
that the patriarch could therefore be the father of not just the Jewish people, but of a righteous person, regardless as to whether they've been circumcised or not. Why? Because righteousness was and is inputted, not imparted to those who believe. And that's a, and listen, that is a big deal. That's a pretty big deal. And it's worth repeating over and over again, almost to the point of, my goodness, how many times Paul going to say that? Because it's necessary. Faith is what God wants. Not a whole lot of outward stuff. Because there's a whole lot of hypocrites, you know, in the body of Christ that can that can show enough acted, boy. They can shout a certain way. They can speak in a tongue, emo, not t t, all, all kind of stuff. I, mean, I just just make up a tongue, you know. I'm I'm talking in the heavenly language. No, you just made that up because right after they, anyway. Let let me we run out of time. So so forgiveness then is not is not earned. Forgiveness is not. It's not old. You, we got to believe to get. It's given by the grace of God to those that are following the New Testament plan of salvation. To, to those that are following the New Testament plan of salvation, Paul then described this in the word that we see today as walking in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, walking in the steps. The steps, the steps have already been made. And God has already ordered our steps. We got to walk in the steps, not make up additional steps, but walk in the steps of our father, of our father Abraham. In Romans chapter seven, Paul presents the law as a means of learning what sin is. Paul said, now what the law is going to do is give you definition, clarification of what sin is. But he also goes on to say that it is, an, it is an impossibility for any of y'all, any of us, to keep the law in the Old Testament. You ain't going to do it. You can't do it as a human being. So Abraham's then, Abraham's work proceeded from his faith. So what he did was, was as a result of what he believed, not from keeping the law of Moses. Now, now think about this. That can't be the case. Because the law of Moses didn't come for some 430 years later. After Abraham, Moses wasn't even born. So, so, so he couldn't be righteous because of the law, because there was like way, way, way 430 some odd years before the law even came into play, centuries later. So our hope then does not depend on righteous deeds. But our hope depends on faith. And, and, and that faith is going to lead to justification by God. And I, we got to bring this thing to a close now, okay? But I, I want you all to look at it. I'm gonna give you, I want to give you a little homework. As homework, I want you to read Galatians 2.16, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 3, James 2, 20 through 26. All this is in your Sunday school book. And remember this quote from William Booth and they from eight, that lives in eight, from 1829 to 1912. He's the founder of the Salvation Army. Look at what, it's, what he says. Faith and works should travel side by side, step answering to step, like the legs of men walking. First faith and then works, and then faith again, and then works again until they can scarcely distinguish which is the one and which is the other. Now, next week, the class next week, the, sun, the class next week, you don't want to miss it because next week we're going to go into that fifth chapter. Oh, my goodness. That fifth chapter is going to talk about peace with God. So I, I, I'd like to encourage you uh, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Nolan T. Torbert, uh, the founder and pastor and overseer of True Deliverance Holiness Church, we want to encourage you to attend next Sunday. We want to encourage you to ask somebody else to attend next Sunday. So listen, y'all, y'all don't want to miss the, the, the class on next Sunday morning of Romans chapter five, because we're going to go a little bit deeper with this peace, because we all got to have the peace of God. And if we don't have the peace of God, 
it, it, it's just going to be a difficult life. But with the peace of God, there's joy, there's understanding, there's happiness, there's you can sleep all night long. You can understand why folks do what they do. You can love your enemies because they sure enough don't love you. You can treat people nice. You don't try to dig, throw a rock and hide your hand. You don't, you understand you dig a ditch, you better dig too, because one you dig may be for you. Uh, that peace of God gives is the kind of peace that passes and surpasses all understanding. Y'all be here next Sunday. Y'all plug in next Sunday and be prepared to have to take some notes. And let me encourage you to read your lesson before next Sunday so we can all be on the same page. Hey, look, y'all have a great rest of the day. We're looking forward to seeing you in fellowship that Paul talked about. This is so, for my last lesson, it's so important. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday morning, this morning in, in, in church. Y'all take care.